Today I'm going to show you how to create a simple evaluation type rule. If you are new to business rules, you might want to know that web rule supports two types of business rules, evaluation and execution. Execution type rules can set values or invoke methods, also called actions, if the rule evaluates to true. Evaluation type rules are different in that they just return the result of the evaluation, true or false, without invoking anything. I'll leave links to the documentation of both types in the description of this video. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to work with evaluation type rules using our ASP.NET demo project. WebRule also natively supports MVC, and you can also find a video on how to create execution type rules using MVC on our YouTube channel if you are interested in the MVC platform. But in general, creating and working with both rule types is not very different on either platform. By the way, you can also use WebRule as a native client-side object. All of our demo projects include an AJAX page that demonstrates how to do this. Okay, now that we are done with introductions, let's get down to business. This tutorial will pick up with the ASP.NET integration tutorial left off. If you have not yet viewed that tutorial, please do so before continuing with this video. Because we will be creating evaluation type rules, it is necessary to open up our markup file and change the mode of our rule editor declaration to evaluation. Although not part of the web rule engine, the demo project also provides a web form that lets us test the rule that is currently displayed, which I'll get to shortly. This feature of the project allows us to see not only how to create a rule, but also how to evaluate it, all on the same page for convenience. Let's open the code behind file of our page. It uses the onInit event handler to subscribe to the click event of a button on the form. The handler of that click is called evaluate rule and is declared down below. As you can see, this is a typical .NET event handler. There is nothing extraordinary here. To evaluate a rule, first we need to check if the rule editor actually contains a rule and that this rule is valid. WebRule validates all rules automatically. We just need to check the isValid property to see if our current rule passes the validation. Then we obtain the XML document of the current rule by calling the getRuleXML method of WebRule. Next, we create an instance of WebRule's evaluator. We also need an instance of our source object in order to evaluate it against our rule. The web form provides it for us via a single method called getPatient. And finally, we evaluate the rule against our source and check the result. As you can see, explaining this code takes longer than actually writing it. As you work with WebRule, you will realize how easy it is to use all of its features. Now we are ready to run the web application. I hit F5 to open it in my browser. Obviously, this form is much more involved and has features that are beyond the scope of this video, so let's just concentrate on evaluation rules for now. To create a new rule, just click inside of the rule area. You'll see a menu that lists all the properties and enrole methods declared in our source. You don't need to do anything else in order to connect your data with the rules engine. WebRule does all of that for you in the background as the page loads. I'm going to create a simple rule that checks if first name contains the letter A. WebRule allows you to make menu selections in order to create a rule. It knows what you might need next or what you might need to change and fully supports the keyboard so you can use that instead of your mouse. Note that we are not going to save, edit, or delete this rule as those topics are covered by other tutorials. In this video, we are just going to create a couple of rules and test them against the data in the form below. To test our current rule, let's enter the name John in the first name box. By the way, there is an info label declared right above the rule area. This page is set up so that this label displays the formatted result of the evaluation. I'm not going to elaborate on that now. You can see how it's done when you look through the code in your project. It's super easy, I promise. So let's click the test button and evaluate our rule against the data in the form. As expected, the result is false because the name in the form didn't have the letter A. Also, notice that it took this page about a second to evaluate this rule. This is because this app uses the free version of WebRule, which has a one second delay on all evaluation calls, which the full version does not have. If we change the first name in the form to Alex and click the test button again, we should expect the evaluation to succeed. And it indeed succeeds. Now let's test the full name in rule method. 
If you remember, it concatenates the first and last names. Let's change our rule and make it check if the full name starts with Alex. To do that, we just need to click the rule elements that need to be changed and select new values from the menus. It's really that easy. Let's also enter the last name Smith into the last name text box. Now click the test button and see what happens. The result is true because the full name does start with Alex. Notice that in evaluate mode you can only create evaluate type rules. So if you click the rules menu you only see the new rule option among the list of existing rules. In execution mode the rules menu is going to have two options. New execution type rule and new evaluation type rule. I'll explain in detail how to create and test execution type rules in another tutorial. Thanks for watching this short demo and thank you for your interest in WebRule Business Rules Engine. For details, please visit our website at rule.codefax.com. All links and additional info can be found in the description of this video.